uh, CEO at Insurance Thought Leadership. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and get started. I'll just uh, spend a few seconds here explaining a little bit about what we're up to and maybe that'll give a, a few more folks uh, a chance to come on. So at Insurance Thought Leadership, we have um, some 600 thought leaders who write for us. We aim to bring the best thinking from the best thinkers on risk management and insurance with the idea that we're going to help lead the industry in, in new directions. These webinars are turning out to be a, a powerful and very useful way of, of helping with that. This is the second we've done with our friends at Capgemini and at Salesforce. So we're delighted today to be able to convene this impressive panel of folks to talk about how the devil is in the details of the uh, crucial and in flux relationships between customers and agents. So without further ado, let me uh, let me jump in. I'll just very briefly tell you a bit about the panelists and then uh, uh, as they answer the, the first question, they can tell you a little bit more about who they are and uh, and, and why it is that they're interested in this topic uh, and, and why they're, they're joining us today. So uh, we're very fortunate to uh, to have Mike Kohler, who is a, the principal in insurance at Capgemini, uh, Fabien Lamaison, uh, who's the head of Odigo Product Marketing and Strategy, uh, Jamie Bisker, Director of Insurance at Salesforce, and then from the customer side, Josh Chandrain, uh, who's the VP of Growth and Innovation at Berkshire Hathaway Travel Protection, who is implementing a number of these things. And then Amy Radin, who is on our advisory board at ITL, uh, who is, uh, among many other things, the former chief marketing officer at AXA. So she has uh, experience in implementing these sorts of, of major changes. So, um, Jamie, well, why don't we start with you, as long as you've pulled together a slide that shows us uh, what the customer journey uh, ought, to, ought to look like. Oh, thank you very much, Paul. Um, so I'm Jamie Bisker. I'm Director of Insurance Industry Solutions at Salesforce. And today we wanted to talk about this, this concept of uh, the, the challenge of getting excellent integration and interaction between customers and agents across the breadth of the insurance industry. And part of that concept involves the idea of a customer journey. And we've uh, researched this. We've validated these concepts. Uh, from various research organizations and with our customers around the world. And the primary concept is that it's important that everybody in the industry, whether it's financial services or pharmaceuticals, aviation, recognize that uh, the customer has their own path in life. And clearly we, we talk about the customer journey. And as they interact with your organization, they need to make sure that their voices are heard, that people understand them in context of where they're at in their journey, what they're trying to accomplish, how they want to be communicated with, how they don't want to be communicated with, and to help set expectations for the level of service they should expect from companies uh, within the insurance industry. And clearly agents are uh, one of the leading uh, customer facing aspects of the insurance industry. And so it's clear that the customer journey concept to be something that agents uh, take in, study, and understand. And at Salesforce, we're very busy at, at the concept of customer success. So the idea of providing a journey, empowering the people that need to participate in that journey with the right information at the right time, whether they be an agent or a customer, third-party claimant, or an internal executive or manager, that those customer journeys are understood and empowered by a uh, so that's basically uh, where we're at with the concept of customer journeys. Okay. Um, Joe, could you put up that uh, customer journey slide? Just uh, there we go. So, Damien, uh, does anybody else want to talk to that a little bit? Well, we're also just uh, so you know getting some um, uh, some breathing noise. I don't know who would be uh, so near the phone among the panelists. Um, so, Jamie, is there anything you want to point out on that slide, or, or, or should we move on? Well, no, uh, thanks. I think the point here is, is that these are prototypical points of contact uh, for customer journey in the insurance industry. 
and uh, the details are relevant to each company, how they uh, perceive their customer needs, how the customers communicate back. So engaging them, uh, making sure that they, they have a transaction history, uh, leveraging the idea of evaluating where they're at in their journey, understanding what it takes to provide the products that they need, and so just basically understanding what their journey might be, uh, making the journey something that's understood across your organization so that they, everybody can talk the same language and speak the language of the customer so that you're using the, the same type of words and, and marketing uh, information across your agencies, across your brokerages, so that there's a consistency uh, along this journey and that the customer is always kept at the center of it so that you don't forget uh, what you're really trying to accomplish is that uh, excellent customer experience by leveraging the concept of a journey. Okay, great. Uh, I, I should add for uh, everybody watching that we will make the slides available later, so you will uh, you will have those. Um, so, Fabian, maybe I'll, I'll turn to you uh, because one of the things that seems interesting is that uh, everybody's expectations is change are, are changing. Um, I go all the way back to almost 20 years ago when the CEO of a major maker of heavy equipment was complaining about how a customer was busting his chops because the customer would pay $350,000 for a piece of equipment and wouldn't know to within three months when it was going to show up, but the customer could pay FedEx $10 and know to within an hour when something would show up. So uh, what are some of the things going on in other industries that are changing how uh, insurers should look at their customers? Right. Um, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, Paul. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Fabien. I'm part of the uh, Odigo product team at, uh, at Capgemini. And Odigo is a cloud-based uh, virtual contact center. Uh, maybe not very specific to, to an industry, but what we see is that, uh, and you're right on, on that, especially mobile users, they really uh, expect direct result. They don't want to wait. They are not okay with waiting, you know, for two weeks um, and, and knowing what's uh, uh, going to happen about their, their claim. And um, I, I think that visual claim, video claim is a good example of that. Uh, imagine like an agent starting uh, a video conversation with a customer on, uh, on his mobile. Uh, the, the customer can directly show the damage and, and send the video or a screenshot uh, to the agent. And, and on the other side, the company can directly you know, assess the situation or even able like, to enable geolocation to be sure that uh, the customer is uh, you know, at the location he, he, he says he is. And, and it's very important because it can really like, easily you know, uh, uh, fasten the claim process and uh, with accuracy and uh, also reduce cost, of course, for, for the campaign. And uh, on the user side, it's really increasing the customer satisfaction because you are really like doing things fast and from the mobile. And so it's particularly true uh, with young users, uh, obviously. So, so it's probably across industries, but that type of uh, usage of the mobile is really like changing the way uh, we should like uh, do you know, the customer care and uh, adapt to that, I would say. Okay, so uh, Mike, what's your perspective? I know I know you talk about moments of truth. Right, Paul. Thank you so much, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just a quick introduction. I'm Mike Kohler, uh, part of Cat Gemini, and I oversee our Insurance Connect and All Ch All Channel Experience programs. Um, and I know Paul, you had asked kind of what's our what's our interest in the uh, in service and, and why you know this webinar is uh, important. And you know, it's just you know, for me, the industry, uh, insurance industry, is changing faster than ever. And you know, the customer now has to be at the center. I mean, there's there's no exceptions to that. And you know, right now with the Internet of Things, social media, and really lifestyle changes. I mean, this is really what's driving the change. And, and you know, I'm really excited to see how carriers will position themselves. And of course, you know, how how I can uh, you know help drive that change as well. Um, you know, and I, I agree with Fabian too, right? As as far as you know, video claims really equipping the insurance agents or the adjusters with the right tools to make themselves uh, more productive. Um, and with that said, you know, I think a lot of customers are are looking for instant gratification nowadays. And and don't get me wrong, I am included in this group. 
you know, if a company doesn't quickly and easily connect the customer to information, services, or, or products, we'll quickly move on to another company that can't. And again, I, I'm, I'm in that group. You know, industries like banking, retail, and travel, I, I think they've done a great job with improving the customer experience and really focusing on the moments of truth. Um, I actually can't remember the last time I set foot inside my own bank. I can transfer money. I can make a deposit, everything from my phone, and I can withdraw money from any ATM around the world. So, you know, similar to these other industries, I think the insurance carriers really need to put in place a, a digital strategy for enabling the customers to improve the customer experience. Um, it needs to focus on the moment of truth. Um, and, and with that, I mean things like buying a policy, reporting a claim, or, or making a, a payment. Um, but most importantly, I think the insurance carriers also have to be aware that they need to include all channels. And they have to ensure, ensure the seamless interactions for covering, as Jamie was pointing out, that customer journey. Right? So this, this means the customer needs the ability to start in one channel and finish in another. So if they start online, the customer service rep needs to be able to see exactly what's been done and what needs to be finished to complete the transaction. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts on, on the moments of truth. Okay. So Amy and Josh, I assume that's all harder than it sounds. Um, Josh, maybe why don't we start with you and, and uh, let, let me just ask how it, it looks and feels when you actually try to, to implement this sort of thing with real life customers who uh, uh, just, you know, tend to, to do things in, in their own way at, uh, at their own time. Sure. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Um, my name is uh, Josh Chandron. I'm the Vice President of Growth and Innovation here at Berkshire Hathaway Travel Insurance. We're a startup insurance company, believe it or not, uh, while we're well backed financially. Uh, we did start from the ground up. And so, you know, as we've started, we've, you know, we've recognized that our biggest disruptor in insurance is the policyholder. And, you know, your question about, you know, you know the devil's in the details is, this all looked very easy for us to implement on the on the outset. And to be honest, the technology was easy to implement and it was easy to bring all the channels online to interact with our agents and customers. But what was more difficult is we had, you know, a couple hundred agents who were used to dealing with customers via phone and email. Um, they weren't used to the digital channels. So we've had to go back and, and re engineer our training programs to reflect the surge of demand by our customers on those digital channels. And so when we start training our agents, we don't train them on voice first, we train them on all of the digital channels. And we start to, we, we need to impress upon them that, you know, that the digital channels are a little bit different. And the way that people approach digital in the past was, I stand up this digital channel, and then, you know, I answer the digital channel, but then I tell these folks to call me. and from our surveys, we've we've realized that that is the number one most frustrating thing for people who leverage digital. So we teach them how to deal with uh, the customer's concerns or questions on the channel that they're using. Um, okay. So you 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 say that uh, having someone send an email and turn it into a phone call is the number one frustration. Mm -hmm. Did you have uh, others as well that you want to lay out for it? Yeah, there, there's a couple other things that we've learned from from talking to consumers, and then and, and you know, and frankly, you know, folks like Salesforce and Cap Gentleman and I, uh, helping us to understand how customers are reacting. But the other key thing for us was um, was having to repeat themselves, right? So they know that you have all this information. And they get on, you know, on a web chat with you, and then you're having to tell them all about yourself over again. That that's a major frustration point. And then if they switch from, um, let's say, from web chat to the phone, um, if they have to start over, that's another uh, point of contention with customers. And you know, to be honest, in the in the school switching economy, uh, we need to be doing all we can to to keep them happy. And we're asking them to give us more and more of their data, but and they're willing to do that. We found, but we have to deliver to them then a measurable uh, improvement in service or in, in an intelligent experience, right? Not asking questions that we should already know. Okay. So, Amy, I know you've done a ton of work on the customer journey. Um, what's your perspective on this? 
Right. So first of all, I um, couldn't agree more with Josh's comments. And hello, everybody. I'm Amy Radin. I'm, um, as Paul said, uh, the former CMO for the AXA business in the U.S., which is a life and retirement business. I'm currently an angel investor, um, advisor, uh, blogger, and various other things have uh, have led digital transformations uh, for several major financial services brands, notably um, Citi in the credit card business. And so I've looked at this issue from a couple of different perspectives. And I think, you know, I've never met an executive who at least would admit that they didn't want to be customer centric. Uh, the devil really is the details of implementation. And I find that to attack this whole opportunity head on can really be overwhelming. Um, what I have found very helpful in the past experiences that I've led is to really start to chunk this down by doing some very basic um, qualitative um, having conversations with uh, with clients who represent you know the different segments of your business um, figuring out who's the most important and then across the customer journey really understanding from the customer perspective how do they become aware they even have a need for insurance how do they go about investigating um, what to do about meeting that need? You know, how do they ultimately make a decision? And then what are their expectations in servicing? And if you step back from your business and really walk in the customer shoes on a segmented basis, you can come to answers to very strategic questions, such as what's the role of my brand, even in an intermediated business, because it does have a role um, even then out to tactical questions such as, wow, people search a lot before they even call an agent, so I better make sure I have great um, search capability. So, you, so getting this journey in place for your key segments and starting with some basic qualitative research is a very, very good way to get going that's practical um, and not expensive. Okay. Uh, that's a great segue into the next question I wanted to ask, which is about what sorts of tools are available and what sorts of tools people ought to be using to accomplish this sort of uh, journey. Uh, Joe, if you, if you put up the call slide, and then Mike, uh, do you want to start us off on that one? I'll add uh, one other thing, or actually two other things. One, uh, I'm hearing some breathing again into the phone. Um, the other is that for folks out there, uh, you have the ability through the chat function to ask questions. So if you, uh, they're on the right side of your, your screen where you see that you can type a message, uh, uh, type a message in there, uh, I will see that and can either as we go along or uh, at the end ask questions of the, uh, of the various panelists. So uh, Mike, over to you. Yeah, absolutely, Paul. Thanks so much. Uh, another great question. So. Uh, you know, the good news about insurance buyers is that the overall customer experience index has improved by over six points, um, which is a, a fact that's being reported in the 2016 Insurance Referral Report that, uh, you know, due out uh, beginning of next month. Um, but with that said, unfortunately, uh, you know, the report also points out that the, you know, that same index is, you know, for Gen Y is lower than any other age brand. And, you know, I, I definitely think this is a problem since uh, they have twice as many interactions and rely heavily on digital channels. You know, I, I strongly believe an area critical for insurers is around developing a corporate social media strategy, you know, as one of their tools. It's important for understanding how and when customers want to be contacted, which goes a long way with, again, developing that individual customer relationship, as I mentioned at the very beginning, you know, putting the customer at the center of everything. Um, part of that strategy, it, it also, you know, the carriers need to have uh, listening capabilities on social media sites. Um, as we all know, customers of younger generations are a heck of a lot more vocal, and they have a wider platform to share their opinions. Um, there's, there's many, many online social networks, and uh, these consumers can immediately spread their criticism or praise. And, uh, you know, if insurance companies are not listening to their customers, they're at a, a major disadvantage. And, Paul, I know I'm getting a, a little winded there, but uh, just really quick, uh, I recently saw a great example. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily involve an insurance carrier, but a windshield repair company. I don't know if anyone has, has seen this as well, but uh, Safe Flight Auto Glass. 
um, you know, for those of you that are, are similar to me and looking forward to the upcoming baseball season, as it hopefully will start to warm up in the Midwest here in the United States a little bit, uh, Kyle Schwarber of the Chicago Cubs hit a ball that broke someone's windshield. The, the owner of the vehicle used Instagram to share that photo, and eventually it circled back to Kyle Schwarber, and he tweeted out, hey, at Safe Light, can you help this guy out uh, with a photo of the actual windshield? Safe Flight was, uh, Safe Flight was clearly listening and jumped at the opportunity and easily netted a ton of free publicity and obviously you know, uh, probably have, have a customer for, for life and, and probably quite a few others. Um, so, of course, this is an example where, where something worked out favorably, but you can easily understand how other situations can escalate in a harmful way. Um, and I, I believe that the carriers have to be able to quickly respond in a meaningful way. And, and again, it all starts with having that strategy, having the tools in place to really communicate and connect with the customer. Cool. Um, does anybody else want to jump in on, on tools? Go ahead. Yeah, this is Jamie. I, I was just going to ask Josh because uh, I knew that with uh, Berkshire Hathaway Travel, that they've had to deal with you know quite a broad range of, of demographic, and I just wondered if they had a a feeling for how quickly uh, Gen Y, Gen Z might be leveraging their uh, photo capability for claims and, and and the experience they're having. Is that something you're seeing, Josh? Yeah, we are. So I mean, we went to market with a mobile first strategy, and I when I say that I I say that and I mean it is everything starts and ends with the mobile device if somebody wants. And we have the legacy channels and, and experiences available if people want to leverage them, but we, we do focus heavily on that mobile experience, which appeals to Gen X and Gen Y. Um, and quite frankly, I think the, the age on that is, is, you know, that demographic, you know, the you know, 40 to 50 year old, we're starting to see them up into the 60s start to leverage the digital channels quite frequently. And you know, you, you asked the question about tools, and um, from our perspective, I think it might be helpful for folks to understand what we're using uh, right now is, you know, we use Salesforce uh, as our, our primary platform for policy claims, uh, marketing, automation, pretty, service, pretty much everything. But within the marketing cloud, we're, we're leveraging Radiant 6 for social listening, um, and that that's not only being used by our marketing team, but that there's some of those conversations that we're monitoring flow directly into our call center, um, which is monitored 24-7, 365. So we are engaging with people when they're having certain types of experiences. So for us, we're, we're really focused on, uh, you know, our customers. And when we identify them, we understand, you know, their, who they are on Twitter. And then all of a sudden they're talking about a bad experience that they're having at O'Hare because of a canceled flight. It allows us to proactively reach out to our customers and say, hey, you're, you're having a bad experience. Remember, you have this protection from us. You know, how can we help you? And those types of experiences go a long way to building loyalty with those generations. Um, and I'd say, I guess, you know, I'll leave it at that, but, uh, and then as far as that customer journey, right, I think it, I'll say one more thing. It comes back to identifying that person. And then every, once we identify somebody, then we really can, you know, we can take that customer journey in a number of directions, whether it's on social channels or email or, or other. Cool. Well, I think that's the, the context. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I think that's the context aspect of the social listening and kind of priming the pump for the journey is making sure you know where you're at in the context of the customer's life so that that customer journey is meaningful. It's not just a pre-programmed X and Y and Z. It really is in context. So thanks, Josh. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. And I would say, you know, today, I, I really do feel that the service aspect and, and how we are engaging with customers is in their mind, you know, as much or more important than the insurance coverage we provide to them. Um, if you're missing that from your business, um, I think there's others that are going to be stepping up to, to fill that void. So that, that gets us into the next point, which is just about how much more connected the world is becoming. Obviously, the, the mobile phone is a big piece of that, but there are a lot of other things that are going on, um, how would you folks, um, and we can, can start with uh, with Mike, 
um, see the, the growing connectedness of the world influencing the way agents and customers ought to interact. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, and again, it's uh, you know it, it's no secret that the connected technologies are transforming, underwriting, and really the entire insurance industry. Uh, again, uh, you know another shameless plug, giving a, a sneak peek into the 2016 World Insurance Report. You know there are three things in technology that are being driven by the Internet of Things. Uh, it's the connected ecosystem, think connected cars or connected home, right? Um, embedded or wearable technologies like Fitbit and machine intelligence, such as driverless cars. You know, these technologies are converging in ways that will have a huge impact on how customers conduct their everyday lives. You know, on top of that, the sharing economy. So, you know, thinking like Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, they're really adding another dimension that carriers have to take into consideration. They also need to take note of how lifestyles have changed and how customers no longer want a traditional model of insurance. You know, nowadays it's really all about data. I know we, we hear it, we see it, everyone's trying to put a data strategy in place. Um, but you know, I, I think finally it's, it's starting to transfer a little bit where more and more individuals are willing to share that personal data as long as it's going to translate into big savings. So you know, you know they're, they're happy to share information from their connected home. You know, from their connected car, from their wearables, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, as much data as you need, please, please do it as long as it translates into a discount. Um, so, you know, with that, uh, you know, customers expect the individual relationship with their insurance carrier. And again, you guys have heard me talk that a lot about. You know, again, customer has to be at the center. It's all about the, the the digital strategy. It's all about building that relationship. It's all about making an individual relationship. And uh, you know, one of those big things is really having those tailored programs that meets their needs. It, it's absolutely mandatory. So whether it's usage-based usage based insurance, whether it's, you know, pay by the mile or, or whatever, you know, that's where the industry is headed. And again, the, these big traditional carriers have to take notice of these changes um, because, uh, you know, that's the wave of the future. Hey, Amy, do you want to weigh in on that one? Yeah, I think that, um, I, I think it, it's, it's right that people will trade data for value. I think that um, for what I've seen, you know, more on the life and retirement side, I think a lot of our comments seem to be more with reference to PNC on the life and retirement side. Um, you know, I've seen businesses uh, where data is, is captured and housed largely around policies inside product silos. So I think in order to bring the data to life, um, and make it actionable in a way that's going to be logical to the customers. Um, carriers really are going to need to focus on re-architecting their data and how data is accessed. I also think there is a huge untapped opportunity to, at which some companies are starting to, to leverage to take advantage of um, what would be non-traditional sources of data, uh, lifestyle data from the web, for example, that can give greater insight into uh, client needs and also underwriting. And I think that's, you know, that's the future path for providing um, not only personalized, but also economically sound um, offerings to customers. But this, this shift from being a product, um, had a push focus to a customer centric personalized focus is, is going to take um, a lot of transformation. Um, and I think will require great leadership on the part of uh, people at the carriers, including the folks on this phone, to drive it forward. Okay. I mean, Josh, are you seeing any surprises? Um, um, I guess I'm just asking, do you have anything to add here, Josh? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised by what we're seeing, actually, So, but I'm also an early adopter, so I've been waiting for a lot of these things for a long time, and I think there's a lot of runway for us as carriers to really engage and, and do some really cool stuff. Um, I, you know, in terms of uh, Internet of Things and, you know, this whole connected ecosystem, um, you know, we're, right now we're, uh, you know, we're a travel carrier, and one would think, how in the heck is a travel carrier going to leverage Internet of Things? But when, when we take a look at what people pay us for, paying for a specific outcome. They don't want to have a travel claim. Uh, 
if we can help them avoid uh, claims related to travel, that's what they'd like us to do. And so, you know, we're exploring uh, different ways to, you know, track bags, um, and then even, you know, outside of travel insurance and talking about business travel accident insurance, where employers have huge liability under duty of care to, you know, know where their employees are and keep them safe when they're traveling. Um, you know, we're looking at some of those technologies in terms of manage, uh, monitoring employee travel locations and check-in uh, using, you, you know, whether it's a wearable or their mobile phone. Um, we really think that that's the next, uh, you know, kind of the next, uh, what should I say, version of a business travel accident policy is one that's very social connected and, and, uh, and IoT connected. So I'll lob in one question that we've gotten from uh, the audience that's relevant here. Uh, basically looking for companies that are probably the best examples in terms of having really broad and high quality uh, data that would enable these sorts of uh, excellent customer relationships we're talking about. Are, are there any exemplars out there? This is uh, Jamie. Let, let me weigh in there. I think we have a lot of clear examples of companies that are leveraging um, IOT and that we don't necessarily realize it uh, because anybody that's doing usage-based insurance, whether it's, you know, the leader in this, which would have been progressive, all state, nationwide, uh, state farm, et cetera, folks that are now uh, picking up the gauntlet and going with that concept, that represents a form of IOT because those devices are picking up information from sensors and helping to modify behavior through the form of discounts. And, I think that type of uh, large data sets are available. We also have companies, uh, travelers, and several others that are leveraging data from water sensors to shut off water supplies so you don't get a flooded basement if the washing machine breaks, that kind of thing. So uh, clearly also in, in terms of what uh, Amy was mentioning about uh, you know, life and health and retirement type insurance, the wearables is clearly coming in with the discounts being provided uh, through Vitality and uh, Manual Life, other companies that are taking to heart the concept of wearables as a source of data to again provide discounts and make people more aware of their their participation in risk management. And I think this leads toward a, a direction that Josh was speaking to and a, a type of thought leadership that I'll be writing or am in the process of writing now. Of it's right now we're in a phase where technology is pushing insurance. We have uh, demographics pushing insurance where the needs of customer experience and a, a very good um, customer journey being set up. But the new business model that will be coming out as a result of this is the concept of personal risk management, such that a given carrier or underwriter will leverage technology across the phases of a person's life to the extent they want to be participating in that and leveraging the social media listening, the IoT, the devices in every home, uh, the not only social listening, but active listening. If you're familiar with Amazon's Echo device, uh, some people find that intrusive, but if we turn that around and say, no, let's make it additive to somebody's life, uh, I think we're gonna see a big change and this concept of personal risk management will be the next phase of business for the insurance industry. A anybody else on examples? Okay. Um, maybe one more question, and then and then we'll um, uh, move on. Somebody raises an interesting point, which is that as we think about these new digital channels, uh, are we losing the emphasis on the traditional skills? Uh, do we need to be thinking about helping agents just handle things on the phone better or handle uh, interactions generally better, perhaps assisted by some of these digital technologies? Than focusing on the new channels that are available out there. This is Fabian. I, I think I, I can I can take that one. I think I mean, as much as we can do, you know, like the digital channels and also doing some uh, uh, self service where it makes sense. I think it's true that like on the voice uh, channel, uh, it makes sense for uh, high quality uh, uh, value type of uh, discussions and. Uh, and I see that question. I mean, I, I, I fully agree with that. I think it's uh, it makes sense where it makes sense to have like a really like a close, uh, almost like intimate um, type of uh, 
uh, discussion, it's still important to be able to uh, to connect people that way. So it, it could be, you know, the voice, uh, the video is also uh, doing that type of uh, proximity, and I think it's uh, it, it's important. Uh, there is also an over angle uh, at it because when when you want to really like do high quality type of uh, a discussion or relationship, in fact, what you want to do is to really bring uh, a personalized uh, experience, a very very customized to to the customer. Um, so so that means different things. That means uh, that you can maybe leverage technology to really uh, recognize who's uh, you know who's on the phone. You can maybe uh, or who's on on the mobile. So maybe you can do uh, voice biometrics. You can do uh, face recognition if it's uh, uh, the mobile phone. You can simply like recognize the phone number, and we've been doing that for quite a while now. And then like do like very smart, uh, intelligent routing to the right destination. And what we see is also that more and more we go beyond the frontier of the contact center to the right person, maybe uh, insurance agents on, on the field, on the go, but we connect the customer to the right person to take care of, uh, of his request. And, and uh, we'd also add that, of course, like, to bring that high value, that means that you have the full context of the customer. So, like uh, that's where like the, the CRM integration uh, comes into play. And that if we are, if you have a deep like uh, a good integration between the systems, that that's really helpful for the agent to have like all the information he needs uh, to 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 talk to the customer. Uh, another example will be. Uh, can also like uh, leverage a little bit more the uh, interaction data, the interaction logs that you have, and maybe you would adjust the uh, UI, the UX, the uh, customer experience depending on what you know from the past interactions. Uh, you could remember the most used uh, options on maybe the uh, uh, in the voice ap application and and change dynamically the options because you remember that that customer is always. As, you know, selecting the same options, so you can fasten the, the process. Uh, and, and what's coming, and that's what we work on, and, and see uh, see uh, more and more is also like things where you really want to leverage, um, you know, the next best interaction. W what that means is that you know, using like technology like machine learning, you would really like try to learn everything about your customer and like know when actually. Uh, that's the best time to reach uh, the person. Maybe if you know that you know the person is calling every day. I mean, every time they contacted you, it was between six and eight p.m. Maybe that makes sense to actually uh, call during that time frame or send a text message because you know that they have a phone, and that you have a better chance to enable the contact. Uh, you could also simply know you know what their preferred channel based on statistics. So instead of just doing a you know, marketing campaign based on email, you would just do like a marketing campaign on the best uh, channel and the best time to your customer, which is a, maybe a little bit a different approach for the uh, administrator of the contact center. Sorry, I was maybe a little bit long, but... Uh, <laughs> no, no. Hopefully that um, answers so, so the question. Of, uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, Jamie, I'll ask you to weigh in in a second, but there, there's one detail that... Uh, uh, a listener has asked to be repeated. Um, it was the name of the, so, the social listening tool that Josh was talking about. The name is Radian 6, R-A-D-I-A-N. It's part of the Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Uh, it sounded like a, a very interesting tool to me, so uh, I wanted to be sure that we got the name out there correctly. So, uh, Jamie, do you want to talk a little bit more about the, the context for these interactions? Yeah, um, I appreciate that. I, the context is is crucial, and, and social listening is part of that. It's also making sure just to simply pay attention to what's happening. Are is the customer calling simply about an address change or a uh, you know a post office box versus their home address? Uh, what what are you learning from social media? Not only to help direct your marketing campaigns, but to collect that information that makes context available and intelligible uh, to your staff, whether that be uh, a claims rep, the agent themselves, uh, somebody that works for the agent, or a call center. 
So uh, where were they when they were having a challenge or are they on their way someplace or are they waiting at a baseball game or, um, you know, on their way to a soccer match, whatever it might be, so that you can capture the context of their lives. And clearly it's about this, this concept of the old world of, of more face-to-face -face interaction, but we, we feel sometimes that we lose as a result of not going to the agent's office or not having that one-to-one face-to-face -face relationship but in fact, we can leverage some of these new channels, uh, digital and otherwise, to augment what we know about a person to the extent they want to share. I mean, not everybody is a, a, a large sharing personality, but most people do find that they uh, want to have an interaction with people and they appreciate somebody remembering that they don't have children or that they do or that they spend a lot of time in their hobby or something like that or they're very busy with work travel. Those type of simple contextual clues are critical to making that customer journey uh, personable and memorable, and it adds value to the insurance company, to the agent, to those interactions, so that you're, you're talking about increasing retention. And those are the type of things that people remember. It's like, you know, why would I leave uh, working with this agent because, you know, we have good conversations, or they remembered this, or they, they never asked me about the thing I don't want to talk about that kind of thing. So I think context is, is a, a huge aspect of it to, uh, these days. Uh, Amy, how would you go about constructing context? Amy, you may still be on mute. Sorry about that. For the, for the clients or for the agents? Um, really either. I am just sort of thinking, uh, I mean, with all the different hats you, you've worn, uh, what's your perspective on, on the importance of context and, and how to go about uh, building it? Let, let's say right. great. Well, I think that context, first of all, it's critical for to come across to your clients as being authentic to create context. So to me, context is acknowledging, you know, I don't think anybody gets up in the morning and aspires to go out and buy insurance and deal with their insurance carrier as much as we'd love to believe that. So acknowledging what's the role, what's the problem you're really trying to solve when you're helping a client with an insurance need. And I think there's um, real enablement that can happen with agents to make them effective partners. You know, in some of the traditional carriers that I've seen, there's a tendency, you know, some people to be to feel like, well, digital is instead of the agent. And I really feel for for large numbers of clients for some time to come, the best relationship is going to be a multi-channel relationship where agent and digital can both come together. And I think one of the keys to doing that, in addition to what you do with your data, is to really empower your agents to be effective on digital. So what are two suggestions for that? One, social media. An agent can't have an authentic relationship, especially with a millennial client today, without having some presence on social media. So making sure that your uh, firm offers, provides the compliant infrastructure so they can be on social media, and then literally providing them with the training to be able to do that. Um, you know, how do you set up a LinkedIn profile to be effective? How do you keep that current? How do you create your own content? Um, I think agents need a little bit of hand-holding in order to do that um, and to be effective. And then secondly, service. Um, most of the companies I've seen, agents are really paid to sell much more than to service, um, but you want them to give good service because when a client has a problem, they're going to call that agent. So there's a l many, many, many things that can be done to help facilitate the agent providing great service faster. Just digitizing the common documents that clients call in asking for a copy of, you know, and enabling secure email um, is, is huge. Um, email forms, um, it's just simple ways to answer questions. Chat uh, may work as a good multitasking tool versus getting on the phone. So thinking about how digital tools can provide automated and quality solutions so the agent feels they can work servicing into their work stream versus having it be something that's distracting them from selling. So that, that sounds like fertile ground to me. Does anybody else want to weigh in on that? Maybe Mike or Jamie? This, 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 this yeah, whole I, notion of uh, I, you know, making sure that the, the simple tools are there to, to, to really make service great. I agree with Amy as like, you know, where 
you know, I think a lot of agents are afraid of the social channels or digital channels because it's going to put them out of a job. But the, the fact is, is those that embrace it are going to find loyalty in their customers that they haven't seen before. I mean, I'm friends with my insurance agent on Facebook, and, and the, the fact of the matter is he understands when I have life events. He, you know, he understands when I'm buying a new home, and he is able to proactively reach out to me and, and address those needs, and we can have a conversation on Facebook Messenger. That's, that's a huge value to me, um, and as the preferred channel, as a 40-year-old as a business professional, who's got a lot of stuff on his plate and needs to get a lot done. I, I don't always have time for a face-to-face -face conversation, but those agents that can make that personal on the digital channel, that, that like I said, it's going to drive loyalty uh, to those agents, and that's where we need to get them. And, and, yeah, and I'll policy. just weigh in briefly. I'll, I'll weigh in briefly but, in that uh, the, the whole concept here is really amplification of an existing relationship. Um, yes, it is possible to have a, a purely digital relationship, but you know it is that that friendship, you know, the friending on on Facebook and making that connection because people are doing it. That is the reality of the world today. And I think you know there is a large majority of agents that do understand it and are leveraging it. And all uh, it's not all we need to do, but one of the key things we need to do, to Amy's point, is make sure that we bring the folks along that need the help doing that. And it's not difficult. It's just showing them, you know, some simple role playing and the fact that this is how it works. This is how you communicate, and, and it's going to help you out. Uh, and that there really isn't too much to be afraid of about it. And if there is such a divide in an organization, say a small agency or even a large agency, um, then then put people to their strengths. If there are people that are really good at this uh, social management, social business aspect, make sure you leverage that and let them help the people that might need help uh, coming along with that. Okay. Uh, one more thing on, Go ahead. Uh, just one more thing on context is, you know, I think a, a lot of times I think business people sit and, and listen to this and think it's all on them. And a lot of the responsibility for making this work does fall to your IT and technology teams. The data is there. They need to surface it in such a way that, the agent or you know the the claims person is able to you know to use that context, use that information to service the policy, and you know a lot of that information is there. It's just locked up in systems of record, and it's not being surfaced today. Um, so don't be afraid to lean on your technology teams. Uh, this is you know this is a, a lot of this is their responsibility as well. And and this is uh, and we that's true as we also see uh, you know more and more requests about uh, having like some sort of like connectors to connect you know voice uh, Facebook uh, Messenger uh, WhatsApp uh, applications and so on that that are becoming like new doors of uh, communications because uh, the users are ready uh, for it so it's it's question of like connecting it to the uh, to the company uh, which uh, are, which we are able to to do. So uh, I agree that the technology can, you know, also uh, support that type of uh, uh, of, of demand. And my sense certainly is that these days uh, that there may be uh, quite a bit of uh, work that needs to be done in core systems, but that there are tools out there that are going to enable people to do this sort of thing. And we talked about with forms and so forth as sort of a uh, an add-on. I mean, Amy or does anybody else want to comment a little bit on the the level of uh, difficulty we're talking about here? Again, as I said before, if you take, if you look at this as one massive problem, it is very difficult and complex. What I think, uh, what I have found very helpful is going back to the customer journey slide where we started the conversation, is if you're able to chunk down your client base into several, at least a handful of major segments, and then for each of those understand what are those moments of truth along the journey, then you can start to isolate what are some high impact areas where I can invest in technology in the near term to show impact on the bottom line so you win more support internally for investment resources to help your agency why this is a good thing and to affect you know, a larger number of customers sooner with better experiences. So I think there's some an analytic framework 
that um, can be created to help drive the decision, sort of break this down into bite-sized pieces that can be executed, you know, over a roadmap. It's not a one and done or overnight. It's a, it's a true transformation. Right. So uh, somebody raised uh, an interesting question that that fits in with a theme. A theme certainly we've been sounding at at ITL for a while. That uh, and Amy, I know you and I talked a lot about this. That insurance companies uh, have all this data and tend to use it to price products appropriately. And in fact, there are lots of opportunities to uh, turn that data into services that you can offer to people. I, I think Josh, that's a particular interest of yours. Do you want to talk a little bit about how uh, uh, about how that might happen? Yeah, I I agree 100%. I mean, we, we all know what the regulatory environment is, and so and insurance products can't solve an overall solution for everyone. And I think the question from one of the, one of the attendees was, you know, what are the trends in this personal risk management um, space? And I, I guess, um, you know, I, I think that services can augment the insurance aspect of the relationship to provide an overall solution. And it's one, you know, because of because services aren't as highly regulated, I think it really opens up a window for us to provide a tremendous amount of value to the policyholder, um, you know, through those means. So we we look at, you know, here at Berkshire, we look at the insurance piece, insurance aspect and the risk management as just one piece of an overall solution offering. So we look for ways to plug ourselves into into ecosystems, you know, in the travel industry on Amazon.com, you know, to, to, to tap into other services, so. And I assume that's the sort of thing that agents could adopt as sort of a, a philosophy. I mean, they, they wouldn't obviously be out there with a whole new products, but uh, in, in sort of the way you talked about knowing when people are having a, a problem at O'Hare or whatever and contacting people, uh, that, that sort of service mentality feels like something that uh, can very much be enabled by some of the digital tools we're talking about. Exactly. Yeah, I I really think that the you know the claims you know when people have to claim or that you know on their insurance policy that that opportunity that you have can you know win loyalty or lose loyalty and I think you know there's been there's some reports out there that says it costs us each you know around seven billion dollars a year in in attrition uh, so I think it is very very important. Okay. Um, so we're sort of winding down here in, in time, and I did want to allow everybody a chance to summarize a little bit. Um, it, given that we're obviously trying to be as practical as possible here and make sure that people have something they can get to, if not uh, this afternoon after they get off the webinar, but uh, then, then at least uh, reasonably soon. So why don't I ask each of you, uh, maybe we'll do uh, things in the order of the presenters on the slide. So start with Mike, Fabian, Jamie, Josh, and Amy, and just offer the the one point you would suggest that people pursue uh, as, a, as a very practical thing that they can do to um, uh, make sure that they they get the details right. Mike, yes, absolutely. Sir. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, Paul, thanks so much for hosting this event. It, it's absolutely been a pleasure being a uh, part of the panel, and, and also uh, kudos to the other panelists. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's been a, a great conversation. Um, just you know, a, a quick action takeaway from me is to insurance or to encourage the insurance companies to evaluate their digital maturity. You know, so so where are they on the spectrum of you know what they have available? You know, do they have mobile? You know, what what's their PC internet strategy? What's their uh, social media strategy? All that sort of stuff. And not only that, what tools do you have in in house? You know, we talked a little bit about some of the ones that are available from a listening perspective. Um, but you know, with the transformation of of core systems, you know, all that sort of stuff plays into it. Uh, if you have a, a CRM portal from Salesforce, as we heard here today, there's a lot of you know great features that can be used uh, from a social media um, aspect and you know really kind of taking everything that you have in house and then and matching that against the governance right so I mean you can have all of the tools 
every bell and whistle possible, right? But if you don't have strong governance, then none of that will come to fruition and, and you'll kind of be stuck in a rut. So, you know, I really think, you know, taking a look at your entire ecosystem, seeing what's available, you know, grading that, seeing that, you know, where, where do I stand against the benchmark and then how do I improve it? I, you know, I think that's a good takeaway from this meeting. Great. Uh, Fabian? Uh, for me, I think back to the journey mapping, I think it, it, it one advice would be like to keep it simple in, in a way that for, for each touch point, maybe one channel makes more sense and, and do it well. Uh, maybe, you know, on, on the mobile, you leverage one thing. On the web, maybe, uh, you know, an overlay type of uh, widget entry door. And then do it, you know, really well with like the, a, a more like personalized experience. I think it's a very uh, good start instead of, you know, trying to do everything everywhere, which doesn't make, make sense in terms of uh, user experience. So that would be uh, my takeaway. And uh, yeah, thank you for hosting this poll. You bet. Jamie? Uh, thank you, Paul. Thanks to the rest of the presenters for a great call, great uh, webinar and conversation. Um, one of the things I like to, to bring people back to is that, you know, clearly the technology is becoming available. Uh, you know, Salesforce, Microsoft, uh, everybody else has capabilities that, that help make this real. The thing that I think is critical for the insurance industry is to consider uh, a holistic approach. That the technology is enabling, you know, we, we have Josh showing us that that's, that's been done. Uh, a lot of our insurance customers are, have similar stories that, that leveraging technology can enable the customer journey, can allow you to listen, can help you provide the context necessary to increase your retention, increase the performance of all your activities, sales, service, marketing, et cetera. But we need to step back sometimes and think about What's the larger plan? And I think too many times the insurance industry uh, focuses on uh, a point solution. So we need to step back and think outside of that model and look at uh, a new business model that leverages technology more broadly to accomplish our goals, especially in terms of uh, customer experience. So thanks. Okay, Josh? Um, thank you. Thank you for having me today. This was a really uh, fun and engaging discussion. And I guess, you know, being in insurance for the last 15 years, I think a lot of times where, where we would get tripped up in terms of implementing some of this is we always are so focused on scalability. And, and I think when we do that, I think we get so caught up in the details and what this needs to do three years, four years down the road that we never get started. So, you know, my my terminology that I use with our team here is that we do things that don't scale, and um, and we do that initially and prove them out, and then and then we scale them. But if you always are going to scale things out of the gate, you know, when, when you start to talk about transformation, you're not going to move the needle fast enough. You're not going to win support in your organizations, and then you know some of these things are going to linger on the shelves and never get done. So. Um, you know, I know it seems simple, but that's the best advice that I can give to people if they want to move the needle right now. So I, I like that a lot. I wrote a book with another guy a couple years ago where our mantra was, think big, start small, learn fast. And it sounds Absolutely. like that's wrong with, with what you're talking about. Uh, and, Amy? And start. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Josh. No, go, go ahead, Amy. Amy, I think you're on mute. Oop, okay, uh, here I go. Um, I, uh, I spend a lot of time these days with startups, and I'd say uh, a word of advice to this group is think like a startup. You know, the idea of, you know, test small and cheap, um, have the metrics in place so you know what your tests are yielding and can move on to the next thing. And don't, it's, it's so easy every day to feel like you've got to have every single new technology, and you don't. Um, if you focus on your customers and their needs and do the testing, you can pick the things that really matter the most to you now and be very um, smart and pragmatic in the investment decisions that you're making. Okay. Um, so thank you all. I'll pass along just two little comments from folks in the audience and then uh, I'll wrap up. One is, is that somebody noted that um, for them anyway, a key issue was having the agent be apprised by the carrier where things are 
uh, stand in terms of a claim, just so that uh, you know the, the agent uh, knows and can maybe intercede on behalf of the, the client, um, uh, or but but at least is, is aware of what's going on. And the, the other is uh, somebody noted that the carriers probably need to be willing to invest a fair amount in this just to make sure that everybody is using the, the tools properly. So. Um, so thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I've always believed very much that the devil is in the details. Uh, most of the lines that I like, if they don't come from Winston Churchill or Yogi Berra, come from Mark Twain, uh, who once said that the difference between the right word and the almost right word is the difference between lightning and a lightning bug. So I hope everybody who's listening today uh, catches lightning in a bottle and not lightning because they focus very much on the uh, on the details. So with that we're uh, we're done. Thanks everybody. I hope you have a great day.